in. Yes, we can. Yes, we can. Scores of protesters arrested outside the White House. Republicans threaten another government shutdown over immigration. It would be a real shame uh, if Republicans were to engage in an effort to uh, shut down the government. Tonight, the immigration wars are blowing up. Last, Last chance, Diego. sir. Last chance. And immigration activist Enrique Morones is here to finish his thought. Then, a land war in Europe. Russia is responsible for the violence in eastern Ukraine. And the president still developing a plan to combat ISIS. I don't want to put the cart before the horse. We don't have a strategy yet. The latest from Ukraine and the politics of the most recent war in Iraq. Plus, Omani Jones on the NFL's stunning admission on domestic violence and the amazing story of grocery store workers who saved their own CEO. All I can say is great to be back together again. All In starts right now. Good evening from New York. I'm Chris Hayes. Tonight, Washington is bracing for a dramatic fight over what's shaping up to be the most polarizing and defining issue of President Obama's second term. An, unex an expected executive action by the president on immigration that could potentially prevent millions of people who lack legal status from being deported. The end of his press conference today, which had been focused almost entirely on foreign policy, the president decided to return to the podium after starting to walk away when reporters pressed him on immigration. He then made clear, once again, he plans to act where Congress not. I have no doubt, um, in the absence of congressional action, uh, I'm going to do what I can to make sure the system works better. All right? Thank you, guys. The president's comments came after 145 immigration activists were arrested this afternoon outside the White House where they were protesting deportations of undocumented immigrants. Advocates hope the president will expand his Deferred Action Program, or DACA, deferring prosecutions for those brought to the United States without papers as children to cover those with close relatives in the U.S., immigrants with a clean criminal record, and many others. The president's action on immigration, which is expected soon, doesn't just have massive implications for undocumented immigrants. It also has the potential to completely alter the midterm election landscape. This week brought provocative comments from two different Republicans, Senator Marco Rubio and Representative Steve King, who both suggested they might effectively shut down the government if the president, as King put it to Des Moines Register, wields his pen and commits an unconstitutional act to legalize millions of people. Congress has just 10 scheduled working days after it returns from recess on September 8th to pass a continuing resolution to keep the government funded. What King and some of his colleagues are threatening is to block that resolution if the president acts on immigration. That would lead to a shutdown, which you no doubt remember from the last shutdown is pretty much the most destructive thing Republicans have done to the Republican Party brand in the last two years. And this is crucial. They'd be doing it right before the midterm elections. While some vulnerable Democrats, including Senator Mark Pryor of Arkansas, are calling on the president explicitly not to act without Congress on immigration, others have already taken to gleefully painting the GOP as a shutdown party in order to get a midterm boost. Meanwhile, despite Representative Paul Ryan's insistence, his party will pass a clean continuing resolution and avert a shutdown, which he has described last time around as a, quote, suicide mission for the GOP. The Atlantic's Molly Ball reports a well-placed House Republican source says, and this is key, GOP leadership is increasingly nervous about the potential for a rebellion on the funding bill from hardcore House conservatives. Joining me now, Congressman Luis Gutierrez, Democrat from Illinois. Congressman, obviously I know where you are substantively on this. The politics of it are fascinating to me. There's a real chess match. You've got folks, I think, on the Democratic side who think that you can kind of set a bear trap, <laughs> which is to, to put this out and tempt a kind of insurrection from the Republicans to freak out over it and cause a shutdown. You think that's smart politics? You know what? I think what the... Here's what I hope, first and foremost, Chris. I hope that finally the Democrats, and I really do believe the president, is going to put good public policy, justice and fairness for our immigrant community, in this case, ahead of good politics. But I have to say, I think... Uh, it's almost as though they're going backwards into yes. the press, right, into some abyss. And they don't see it. Uh, they don't understand the demographics or refuse to come. Uh, you know, they still think that Steve King and, and where he lives and where he's at is a reflection of America. It is not a reflection of the totality of the American. So there will be 
Here's what I, let me just say this to you, Chris. So when the President of the United States said, I'm no longer going to deport immigrants that are undocumented that arrived here as children, right, DACA. Right. And he did that in, what, June of 2012. And then about two months later at the Democratic Convention, you had undocumented youth speaking at prime time at the Democratic That's Convention. Right. And Barack Obama not only got two million more votes from Latinos in 2012 than in 2008, he got a higher okay. percentage of the vote. But so if you want to look at the politics just through a political lens, That's I, I got to tell you, the last time he did something like this, it was pretty okay. good for Democrats. So if I'm an advisor in the president's year, and I'm, I'm being paid to gain this out, there's also a case to be made that, like, are you really going to do something this polarizing, this high risk in the run-up to a midterm? Why not just wait until after the election? And that is a decision that the president is going to have to make. And I believe that you and I, we can talk about this, but we can't. That's one thing we're not going to be able to answer. I think... The decision has been made, I think. This is what I believe. It's not what I know. It's mm -hmm. not what I've been told, but it's what I believe, you know, by extrapolating from all my conversations. So between you and I and everybody watching this <laughs> program tonight, I believe it's, I, I suggested this to you a couple of months ago, that it's going to be millions. Yeah. It could be up to five million people. But having said that, I believe that's what the president's going to do. He's got to make a decision. Does he do it before or after uh, the November election? Well, that's, I hope yeah. he says, you know what? I have principles, I have values, I'm going to put them forward, and I'm going, to, I'm going to do what I said I was going to do. I said I was going to make a decision by the end of the summer, and I'm going to announce it, and, and I hope he does that. I hope he puts good public policy in good. Because you know what? Pryor's doing what Pryor has to do yep. so that he can continue to be a Democratic senator, as he feels from Arkansas. But we have to do what we have to do as a Democratic Party to stand up for our it, principles very, and our values. Very important uh, history lesson there, recent history lesson from Congressman there about the President saying he would announce something at the end of the summer. So people should remember that. Congressman Luis Gutierrez, thank, thank you very you. much, sir. All right. Thank you. Earlier this week, we showed you some incredibly awesome...